I'd like to turn to Psalm 31. We're reading from verse 19 through to verse 24. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you bestow in the sight of men on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from the intrigues of men. In your dwelling, you keep them safe from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed his wonderful love to me when I was in a besieged city. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, <clears throat> all his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Then we move across to 1 Peter, the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, from verse 3 through to verse 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. Now though for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with, with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And then we flip back a bit to Colossians chapter 3. And this is our text for today, Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1 through to verse 4. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you, will al you also will appear with him in glory. We give thanks to God for his word. Amen. Sorry to disappoint you, but 2021 is over. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and 2022 is here. There's nothing we can do to stop it. It's here. And as we're standing here at the beginning of a new year, it's a good time to reflect on the year that's ended and to look forward into the year that is coming, this year that we've now gone over the threshold into. And it's also a good time for God's people to take inventory of their walk with the Lord. We should try and take a close look at where we are in our relationship with Him. We need to examine ourselves and to see where we have been, where we are, and where the Lord wants us to be. Where we have been, where we find ourselves now, and where the Lord wants us to be. And this passage today from Colossians chapter 3, those four verses, gives us the opportunity and the challenge to do exactly that. And in a way... Today's message sort of rounds off and finishes our theme from last year, from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, where we, our theme was, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I pray that that is what you have been doing through 2021, that you and your household were serving the Lord. So now I want to ask you a question. Who of you have done spring cleaning before? I think we, oh, I see all the hands have gone up. 
All hands up. We've all done spring cleaning. And I, and I guess when we move, then we're forced to do a spring clean, aren't we? When, when you move. And if you've been in a place for a long time, there's a lot of spring cleaning to do. A lot of things that you, that you go through. And, and when you're cleaning and, and doing the spring clean, you often come across things that fall into one of three categories. There's the reduce, there's the reuse, and there's the recycle as, you, as you're cleaning up your things there. Some things you want to keep. Some things you want to throw away. And other things take you, down a, take you on a trip down memory lane. And in these four verses from Colossians chapter 3, there is a challenge for God's people to do exactly the same. And as we look at our lives in the light of these verses, and, and we're challenged to reuse some of the things in our lives. We're challenged to reduce some things in our lives, and we're challenged to recycle some things in our lives. But what needs to be reused? But when you're coming to spring cleaning, you're tidying up and sorting things out, you find some things that are really important to you. And what do you do? You keep those things. You don't throw them away. You keep them because you treasure them. And in a sense, maybe they'll still be worth something to you. You'll be able to use them in the future. And in a spiritual sense, Paul is telling us the same thing. That there are a couple of, of, of precious spiritual possessions that we would do well to hang on to as we go into this new year. When Jesus died on Calvary, Every person that was going to, that would ever place their faith in Jesus Christ died with him that day. Okay? In a spiritual sense. Because in a spiritual sense, we died to the penalty and the power of sin in our lives with Jesus on that cross. And so we are now dead to sin. As believers in Jesus Christ, we are now dead to sin, as Colossians chapter 2, verse 20 tells us. But then, in chapter 3, verse 1, Paul tells us, well, he does tell us, he reminds us that we have also been raised with Jesus. Not only have we, have we died with him, but we've been raised with him again. And being raised with him means that we're now dead to sin and now alive in Jesus Christ, alive to a new life in Him. And I think that knowledge of, of being alive in Christ helps us to live for Him. Because we're no longer just these empty vessels. We are now alive to Christ. And since we've been raised to a new life in Christ, we're told to set our minds on the things above, not on the things of the earth but on the things above. In other words, we're told to continually seek after the things which come from God. Continually seek after these things. And to set our minds on the things of God. The things that don't bring us glory and bring us fame and, and fortune, but the things that bring glory to God. That's what we must set our minds on to. And if you look at Colossians 3 and uh, chapters 3 and 4, Paul gives us some insight into the things that we are to pursue. Things like a deeper knowledge of Jesus, a clean and a holy life, godly virtues, holiness in our home life, in our domestic life, holiness in our social life, not just practicing what we do, practicing our, our faith at home, but practicing it wherever we find ourselves. Having an effective prayer life and being a fruitful witness. Those are the things that we're to pursue. Those are the things that give glory to God. In other words, we're to live, as John writes in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, we've got to live like Jesus lived. We've got to live like Him. And we're to live out the fruit of the Spirit that we find in Galatians chapter 5. And those are love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, any other takers? Goodness, self-control, 
Uh, okay. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. What's the name? Long-suffering. Long-suffering is one of them, yeah. Let's have a look. Galatians chapter 5. So that we get it right. So we know what they are. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the things that we're to live out every single day. Because that brings glory to God. We're challenged to live a heavenly, holy, and God-honoring life in this world. That's what, that's what we're challenged to do. Not to live for ourselves, but to live for God. See, every decision, every activity, every plan and purpose is to be considered in the light of eternity. Is it going to bring glory to God? Everything is to be laid out before the Lord and considered not from, a, from an earthly and an essential pleasure for ourselves, but from the viewpoint of heaven. And those are some of the things that we are to reuse. We've got to use them again and again and again. Keep going back to them. Keep applying them to your lives. But what are some of the things that need to be reduced in our lives? As we're spring cleaning, we find some things that, well, oh my word, I haven't used this for a hundred years. Into the bag it goes. Oh, well, this is, no, this is broken or whatever. Into the dustbin bag it goes. If, it's, if it no longer serves any purpose, what is the point of keeping it? Into the dustbin bag it goes. And in our spiritual lives, the, the same thing is true. Some things in our lives have to be let go of because they simply don't have a place in our lives. And as we've seen, Paul tells us in verse 2 that we're to focus our minds on the things above. Focusing our minds on the heavenly things. And while we do that, we are to avoid being caught up in the, the things of the world that would, would swamp our minds and hinder our walk with Christ. So we've got to focus our minds on the things above. And here in Colossians, Paul mentions some dangerous distractions that would hinder our walk if they were allowed to get into our lives. And he puts them into two categories. There's the false doctrine and there's foolish demands. So back in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, Paul warns the, the Christians there in Colossia about those who would take them captive by false doctrinal beliefs. Now the enemy loves nothing better than for God's people to get themselves trapped into some false system or, or belief that pulls us away from the focus on Jesus. The enemy does, wants nothing better than to do that because then he's won the victory. And, the, and Paul tells us the enemy does this through hollow and deceptive philosophies. And you just have to look around at the world. You go into a bookshop and look at the, the section there, the esoteric books, and you can just see the, the philosophies that man has made, these empty, hollow, and meaningless philosophies that there are. There are so many things that man has invent, invented that just are these strange belief systems that have come out over the years. And every single one of these is at variance with Jesus Christ. Every single one of them, because they're man-made. If the focus is not on Jesus and his shed blood for the forgiveness of our sins and on the fact that he is God the Son, then it's not from God. Because that is what our beliefs stand on. And then there's human tradition. Just because we've always done it this way and we've learned to do it this way and uh, we've got to continue doing it in that way. That's, not, that's just a tradition. What does the Bible say? 
Just because people have believed something to be true and they've been taught that something is true doesn't necessarily make it true. We're not to base our faith and our walk on the traditions of men, no matter how godly or worthy of respect those people may be. Go back to the Bible. Go back to our belief system on the Word of God and have a look at that. Trust the Word of God alone. And then there's the principles of the world. The, the simple things that are in contrast to the deeper truths that we find in God's Word. We're to stay with the Bible and try everything against the clear Word of God. If somebody comes with an idea, what does God's Word say? If somebody comes with a new, new thought, what does the Word of God say? How does it back up? How does it stand against the Word of God? And if you listen to certain high-profile preachers today, you'll, you'll hear them saying the things that Paul warned us about. You've got to be so discerning. You've got to be so, so walking with Jesus. You've got to be so in the Word of God to be able to discern truth from error. Run from these things, regardless of how fancy the packaging is that it comes in. And then in Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17 and 21 and 23, Paul also believes, uh, warns the believers to watch out for people that would place them back in under the law. See, Jesus came to, came to deliver us from the impossible demands of the law. There's no way that we could keep the law ourselves. Hence the, the Israelites, year in and year out, having to atone for their sins because they couldn't keep to the law. But Paul's telling these believers that no man has the right to be their judge. And if we've been saved by Jesus, then we have met the demands, or we've been delivered from the demands of the law. If we're saved by Jesus, we've been delivered from the demands of the law. And now we are at liberty in Jesus to live for Him. And the whole point of these verses is, is this, that true spirituality doesn't consist of keeping man-made external rules. Instead, it's in a personal faith relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. What you do or do not do is not what makes you a spiritual person. See, spirituality comes from knowing Jesus and allowing Him to live through you. That's where spirituality comes from. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 to 9, points out certain things that we are to put to death. But these things are part of our earthly nature. And we so easily fall back into them. Things like sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language, and lying. Those are the things that we are to put to death. And if any of these things are in your life, then they've got to be reduced. They've got to be taken out. We've got to take it out and throw it away. Why? Because they will hinder your walk with God. If those things are in your life, They'll hinder your walk with God. But how, how can we be victorious over the sin in our lives? Well, one step is to starve our fleshly appetites. And how do we starve our fleshly appetites? Well, we don't feed the anger. We don't, we don't feed the lust. We don't feed the evil desires. And we overcome them. Come, overcome it by crowding it out with the things of God instead. You know, filling our, filling our lives with the things of God. Filling our lives with the Word of God. Filling our minds with it so that sin cannot get a foothold in our lives. But some things need to be recycled. So when you're cleaning up the room, you... you you find, sometimes find something and you, you pick it up and you look at it and immediately your mind goes with it. 
You know, you, you have these wonderful memories that, that come to mind and you, you start reminiscing about it. Or like a, a picture from a, t a drawing from one of your children that, happened, that they drew when they were three years old or something. Oh my word, I remember this. And, you know, this they were doing this at that time or the, they were at that school. And you know, sometimes you can maybe even remember what they were wearing when they gave it to you. And you, know, you, you just go back on the, this, this time trip down memory lane. You recycle your memories as they come flooding back again. And in these last two verses of our text from Colossians 3, verse, verse, uh, yeah, Colossians 3, verse um, 3, uh, 3 and 4, we have reminders of some important spiritual truths for us today. And we need to stop and consider them. We need to remember the blessings of the Lord. Paul writes in three, verse 3 and 4, For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will, will appear with Him in glory. See, Paul reminds us again that we have died to sin and the influence of this world on our lives. And one of the surest ways for, for a child of God to enjoy spiritual victory in their life is for that person to understand as we read in Galatians 2 verse 20, that we are crucified with Christ. And once we get a grip on that truth and do what, what Paul writes in Romans chapter 6 verse 11, to count ourselves dead to sin and alive to Christ, then we will grow deeper in the things of the Lord. That's when we will grow deeper. When we are saved, our lives become hidden in Christ. Our lives become hidden with His life in God. As we read in, in the second half of verse 3 in Colossians 3. And this new life, as Peter writes in 2 Peter 1 verse 4, imparts to us the divine nature. The nature of God. And this new life that we now have as a child of God guarantees our eternal security. Because when we are in Jesus, we're in protective custody. When we're in Jesus. And Paul closes this, this text that we're looking at today in the last two verses, verse 3 and 4, by reminding us that the world is not the best that there is. Yeah, we, we may have to deny our flesh down here, but one day in heaven, it's going to be all worth it. You know, we, may, we may battle sin and the devil and, and Satan down here, but we're going to enjoy victory in heaven one day. In Christ, we will be vindicated. And we're going to be glorified with Him. And right now, every single one of us, if we're really honest, we battle the world. We battle the flesh. We battle the devil. And the en these enemies are going to do everything they can in their power to hinder us and to cause us to fail. They'll try and do everything to get us to fail. But the good news is, one day, those battles are going to be over. They will be over. And our flesh is, is going to be changed and renewed into the image of God. We're going to be glorified and we're going to leave this world with its sin and we'll go to be with our Lord and there bask in the glory of our Redeemer forever. How wonderful is that? that despite what's, what we find happening in our lives and going on here on earth, that one day, as a child of God, we're going to get to bask in the glory of our Redeemer. And so as we've, we've stepped over that threshold into the new year, we need to take a good, hard look at our lives so, and our walk with the Lord. We need to ask ourselves, what are some of the things that need to be reused? What, where does our focus maybe need to be readjusted? 
What are some of the things in our life that, that need to be reduced? What are some of the things that we need to get rid of within our lives? What do we maybe need to just leave at the cross and let Christ take care of it? Or what are some of the things in, the, in your life that you need to, to recycle? Those things in your life you need to maybe think back on and to remember the blessings of God that you've had in your life in the past. And so in the, in the quietness here this morning, just for a couple of minutes, I, I want us to, just in an attitude of prayer, to ask the Holy Spirit to show us what we need to reuse, what we need to reduce and what we need to recycle within our lives. So let's pray. As Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for Paul, who is inspired by your Holy Spirit, to write these words. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to, to show us Impress upon our minds some of the things in our lives that need to be reused. Where, where does our focus maybe need to be adjusted? Holy Spirit, show us the, some of the things in our lives that need to be reduced. Some of the things we need to, to lay down or to remove from our lives. Things that may be hindering our relationship with you. And Holy Spirit, show us too some of the things in our lives that need to be recycled. The things that we need to remember and thank our Heavenly Father for, for His blessings that He's, He's bestowed on us over the years. So Holy Spirit, in, in, this, in the quiet this morning, speak to us. Show us what we need to reuse what we need to reduce, and what we need to recycle. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that when your Son ascended into heaven after being raised from the dead, that you didn't leave us alone, but you sent your Holy Spirit to dwell within your people. And Holy Spirit, we cannot walk the roads that Jesus has laid out for us on our own. We need your help, we need your strength, and we need your power. And so as we go into this year, Father, through the power of your Spirit, let us be reminded of what we need to reuse within our lives that comes from you. What needs to be reduced or removed from our lives that hinders our relationship with you. And help us to recycle and recall those memories, those blessings and those times in our lives in the past where we've, we've had those mountaintop experiences with you. Those joyful times that will help us through the, through the valleys that we go through. So Holy Spirit, be with us. Fill us afresh as we move into this new year. Be with us. Guide us. Guard our hearts and guard our minds. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs>